Hello and welcome back to our push of block series. In the last episode we defined what we're going to be doing with our block and we made it start moving one space at a time. Uh, in this episode though we're going to go through the process of stopping it from moving when we walk away from it. So let's get started and take a look at that. Okay so now we've got our character attaching to the block and moving it one space. Let's make it so that when we have finished we are going to detach ourselves from the block. So we're going to do a stop pushing custom event. So custom event, stop pushing. And in stop pushing, we're basically going to do the uh, reverse of what we've done up here, where we disabled the movement and attached it. So we're going to drag out our get player character. And we are going to choose here set movement mode. And we're going to set to walking. So that resets the movement settings there. So we're going to do walking. Um, we then also want to detach it. So get player character again, drag out to detach from actor. And put that onto here. Location wall, keep world, keep world, keep world. And to test that out, if we go over to our timeline here on finished, We'll just drag out, stop pushing into the finish there. So when I come away from that block, pushing it, I should be able to walk away from it. Yeah. And test it from different directions. I can push it out. And I can push it again by hitting a key again and again and again. So I'm walking into it, I'm hitting it. So you get some nice reactions there doing that. Okay, so the next thing is we've got the issue of is the block will be able to go through things. So if I were to push this through here, it will collide and go straight through, uh, which is not what we want. So we're going to go back to our can push and affect that. So let's go into the pushable object here and we're going to go over to our um, uh, can push. Okay, so on can push here, we've got the line trace working for the player. So if that is true, great. We're now going to do another line trace, and this is going to come from the object itself. So, well, not line trace, sorry. We're going to do another capital trace. So, capital trace by channel and put that into there. Now, the reason why I'm using capital trace is because then we can use the whole width of the shape. Uh, if you wanted to as well, you could also do a box trace. That might actually may be better for this case because we're using a, a, um, an actual box. So that makes sense. So we've got a box trace here. We can give it a start and end point and work out its sizing. So we can show you what that looks like. Hold on. So the start position for this will be the actor location. The actor location. And the end position will be the actor location plus the direction that we're going in. So the direction we're going in is based upon our pushable direction here being multiplied by travel distance. And that's where we're going. So we need to go back to our... Actually, we'll just copy this, actually. Be a lot easier. Copy that. Go back to can push. Paste that in. And anything we don't need in here is this top vector here. We just get rid of this. So it's just the pushable direction multiplied by tra travel distance added onto the current location. Or... You can use the actor location if you want instead. Same difference. Okay, so that's the first thing there, but we also need to add on another location distance on this because travel distance is only so much. We have to add on the extent of our box as well. So we're going to take out our cube mesh and get the mesh component, uh, get the mesh part of the component. So get static mesh. And from there, we can get bounds. And if you split this open, you'll get access to the extent. And the extent is basically the size of it. Um, you can also use the sphere radius, which is also the size of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add on to here the box extent there. And we'll just do that. Um, 
and that should, I think, uh, be correct. We might have to multiply it by two. We'll double check that in a second and put that into N there. The half size of the box is going to come from the box extent. So we'll just drag that across to the half size. Uh, orientation, uh, we can leave that alone, I believe. Uh, trace visibility, yep, that's all cool. Draw debug, we'll do for duration so we can see this working. Okay, and then on return node, we're going to put that in here. And this will only return that one if the return value here is not true. So I'm going to do not boolean and flip it going there. Because if this returns true, I want this to become false. So true, become false, output false. If it's false, I want this output in true. So I'll just be flipping it. And not boolean basically flips it around. So let's test that out, make sure I've done the box trace correct. Um, we drag that out there. So you can see the box trace doing stuff there. Okay, so it's colliding with the floor first and foremost, you can see here going on. Okay, which is obviously not great. We don't want it doing that. So we have to add some height to it. So let's go back to our thing here. And we're gonna add to this a height of um well, let's add the uh the the height of our extent here. So we just break this open and we'll split this open. And I'm going to add in that Z height there. And I'm going to do the same for the start location. I'm going to add here, split this open, and just drag the Z over into there too. It's our start position. All right, let's test it out now and see what the box trace is doing now. Okay, that's not too bad. Um, So it's interesting, it's still colliding with something. Let's find out what it's colliding with. Uh, ignore when the self is on, orientation. Okay, let's just print out what it collides with. Uh, do print string. And we'll do get component. And let's test that out. So it's colliding with SM cube, state mesh component, SM cube. Okay, it's colliding with its own component for some reason. Um, it shouldn't do because it should be ignoring it, but ignore with ignore self. But never mind, we'll just do an active ignore and we'll make that. And we'll just do self in there. And let's see if that ignores uh, SM cube state mesh. Yeah, what is SM cube? Oh, it's the floor. It's hiding with the floor, not the thing. Actually, okay. Um, sure, sure, sure. So we'll go back into here. Okay, we'll just make a ray now. We don't need that. Um, okay, so let's just add a value to see how high this needs to go. So I'm going to put in here uh, 100. This should have been 100. But we'll check this out in there. It's just because it's scaled, maybe. There we go. You can see the box collision doing its job there. Yeah. So now if I go to push it this way. It's getting blocked by the box collision. Okay. So it won't let me push any further that way. Okay. And at the moment, as I said, that looks like it wasn't affected by the scale of it. So with the extent going into the half size, we want to multiply it by probably the scale of it. So multiply it by the cubes scale. Get uh, get relative scale 3D, plug that in there, and then put that into half size. That should make a bigger box for us here. Yeah, there you go. Uh, but it's still cloning the floor. Uh, why is that? Um, 
Okay, so this is the issue we've got here is I want to um okay, so we've got this going up. Okay, yeah, I see. So the issue is is that we've got this going um from the floor. I need to remove that pin there. So the end point is the actual location plus the new direction they're going in by the travel distance and the vertical offset. The start position is just the actual location and vertical offset. And if I compile that, that should be more accurate in size and scope. So you notice it was going too far off. So there you go. That's more accurate to what I was expecting it to do. Okay. Um, it's just showing where the box would go at that point. But I want it to ignore the floor. Um, so for that, I want to make it scale it down a little bit. So we're just going to go into the half size, maybe. Um, here. And we'll just multiply this again by 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9. We'll try it with that. So it's slightly smaller. Therefore, should be sitting above the ground, which it is here. Okay, so I can push this around like so. Okay, and if I go and push it, so the issue of the block moving diagonally has to do with the fact that our x and y coordinates that we're getting from our direction here are both equal to one after being rounded. This means our block will get pushed to a diagonal position. Now, I don't want it to do that. I want it to go just in cardinal directions. So basically, I want it to not move diagonally at all if we're not facing the right way. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our hit event and we we'll use the hit normal. This returns the normal of the wall of our hit. And we're going to take this out and do a dot product. And we'll dot product the actor's forward vector. This number returns how close they are in being the same. So, for example, if I were to print string this value, you'll see what I mean. So I'll put that in there. Print string dot product. If I were to push it dead on, it gets pretty close to 1, yeah, 0 0.99. But if I start angling around, and you see it goes to 97, 95, 93, 90, 883. So there you go. You can see it's starting to change now. So we don't want it to do that. We only want it to allow you to push if the value is over a certain value, a certain amount. So we're going to take that over there, and we're going to put in a branch here. And the branch we're going to put in before our pushable direction here is calculated put that in there and then connect it back up and the condition is going to be this dot product we're going to check that it is greater than and we'll put in a value of 0 0.93 okay we'll see if that works all right and put that into there so now it should only push in the cardinal directions because it won't let me push if I'm angling too far away. Yeah. So we get some nice positioning of our block there. Perfect. There we go. Okay, there we go. Our block is moving quite freely. However, there's loads of restrictions we need to put on place to stop our block from doing things out of character that, that we don't want it to be doing. So in the next episode, we're going to go through setting up the constraints of our block. You can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lady. You can find all my videos early before anyone else. Thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support in the channel. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.